What's the most creepy thing you've ever witnessed? My brother after his overdose. Dude looked like a translucent bluish red color, covered in his own puke, jaw tensed shut. My dad and I thought he was dead, but we worked on him anyway. Pretty sure I chipped some of his teeth prying his mouth open, I cleared his airway. Me and my dad traded compressions until he sent me outside to flag down the ambulance. And that fucking goober survived. He's been sober from hard drugs for 7 plus years, sober from drinking for 5 plus. Two beautiful daughters and a wife. I was in a restaurant years ago on lunch break. At the time I was a very thin 25 year old woman. There was this big creepy guy sitting there who would not stop staring at me from the moment I walked in the door. I mean just open face staring without blinking for the entire 15 minutes I was eating several seats away. I asked for a box and left early to get away from him. As I walked out he said, you shouldn't be out alone. Someone's going to grab you and steal you away. 100% convinced Creepazoid had someone locked up in his basement. About 25 years ago, a few days after my cousin's wedding, a large group of us decided to go out drinking one night in Portland Emmy. We decided to walk from my aunt's house to the bar and back so no one would be driving. On the way back from the bar, we cut down a dark residential street, and there was a large guy just standing there holding a hammer. It's like 2 a.m., and there is this large guy just standing in the street holding a hammer. A few of us asked what he was doing as we walked by, but he just stood there watching us as we walked down the street. The guy never said a word. Luckily, there were 12 of us in the group because who knows what this guy was up to. He gave off some creepy Jason Voorhees vibes that's for sure. This guy followed me home. Said he saw me there often and named a few local spots I go to sometimes as places he sees me. A few months ago we were at a relative's house, when we were going back home at 2 to 3 a.m. we saw a guy covered head to toe in blood walking, or at least trying to. He started signaling but we didn't stop because we didn't know what to do, we immediately called the cops and told them what we've seen they said lock the doors and windows and don't stop. Then they kept calling us back asking about the exact location, they called us back over five times and they never found him. Edit. A lot of people seemed to think he was in a car crash but he was exiting a building, or at least it seemed like it, there weren't cars around except parked ones. Shoulda said that previously my bad. When I was young, me and my cousin used to go on walks on the paths through the woods near our grandma and grandpa's house. Their neighbor used to mow out multiple paths through the woods to connect properties and there was probably a couple acres in between those properties. I honestly have no idea what an acre is but just go with it, anyway, one day we went on a walk down one of the paths. We went down a connecting path that seemed new to us. We went down the connecting path for some time until we reached a dead end. In front of us at the dead end was a run down dirty old mobile home. Outside it was a clothesline with clothes hanging on it and a balloon tied to it. The grass around it was all brown odd for the early summer in the Midwest. We both agreed it was creepy and sprinted back to our grandparents' house, took us about five minutes, maybe less. We told our grandpa about the mobile home and he didn't really believe us but our grandma convinced him to follow us there. We tried to find the connecting path but we dot couldn't for the life of us. Our grandpa chalked it up to two kids with wild imaginations, but it really freaked me and my cousin out. We tried multiple times after to find it again but never did. Didn't help that it was in the heart dot of the clown epidemic. Sorry if you have trouble reading this. English is my first language dot I'm just bad at it. It wasn't witnessed but experienced. I was about 21 and had just moved to the big city and was living with a couple. One night they were out and I answered the phone. This is in the 80s mind you so there was no such thing as caller ID. The guy asked for the woman and the man by name and when I said they weren't there he just very casually went on to talk about a little girl who lived nearby and said that he was molesting her right then. I was pretty freaked out because he seemed to know the people I lived with and knew the little girl's name, but when they got home and I told them about it, 
they just wrote it off as a typical obscene phone call. I'm sure that's exactly what it was but it was still damned creepy. I traveled to London for work occasionally. It was a busy morning, rush hour, and hundreds of people were walking over London Bridge zoned out on their commute. I looked down into the River Thames and saw a police boat driving towards this floating object. Then they just pulled the body up and into their boat and sped off. I felt like I was the only person who'd even noticed it. First time I've seen a dead body. Before cell phones, I accidentally dialed the wrong number, but got the person I was trying to call at that wrong number. She was at her uncle's house, he picked up the phone, I asked for her and he sounded confused as he handed her the phone. S21 in Cambodia and the killing fields. The results of genocide which occurred between 1975 and 1980. I visited in early 2000s. S21 was the secret center of a network of nearly 200 prisons where people were tortured by the Khmer Rouge. Pol Pot, took control of the city and country, and ordered anyone with an education or who wore glasses out of the cities and into rice fields, despite having no knowledge of the land. If they couldn't grow crops, they were killed or starved to death. Those that resisted were imprisoned in concentration camps, with S21 being one of the main ones. It was originally a school. A place of education and peace. It was transformed into prison of torture. Each classroom was modified to have multiple brick cubicles built inside them, similar to maybe a gym bathroom. Each classroom housed 30 to 40 prisoners. They were not allowed to shower, or use the toilet. Once a month, prisoners were hosed down through the windows. There was also a process of choosing to kill an entire family, including children and babies. I forget the term, but basically it was the idea that if one part of a tree is diseased, it is best to cut the entire tree down including the roots. There were 30k imprisoned at S21 over the period of Pol Pot's regime. One of many converted school torture camps. Men, women, children, and babies. There was a practice of using babies for target practice. There were photos of this. From the 30k prisoners, there were only 12 survivors. When you visit S21, you can freely wander around the school grounds, enter the cells, stand in the torture chambers. You could feel the death and pain from the walls. Just down the road from S21 is what is known as the killing fields. This is where tens of thousands of bodies are buried in mass graves, all of whom went through the torture camps, all who were victims of Pol Pot's regime. I was told buses of people were brought in on a regular basis with those who would be brought here for their execution. You were sent here to your death if you were educated, if you wore glasses, if someone in your family did, if you resisted or refused orders. When Pol Pot was overturned, the locals collected skulls and bones and built towers with them to honor them. Giant shrines of tens of thousands of human skulls and bones are erected there. Parts of the killing fields were still littered with bones and clothing that they wore when executed. You could see patches of dirt that the wind and rain had eroded away, with bones, clothing and items visible in the dirt. This whole experience was one of the most humbling yet terrifying things I've seen that occurred on this planet, and I still sometimes can't believe these atrocities occurred in my lifetime. One random night in middle school I woke up and had the odd feeling that something or someone was present in the house and coming towards my room. I was scared so I closed my eyes to pretend to be asleep. I could faintly hear something come in my room and it felt like someone was standing over me, looking to make sure I was asleep. I laid on my back, eyes shut, until the feeling passed, and ended up falling asleep. I woke up in the morning to find out that our house was robbed. I grew up somewhere very rural, no street lights and far away from any town with them. At night it was dark. My bedroom door also never closed properly, you could latch it but it would pop open if you pushed the door lightly. One night I woke up suddenly, without knowing why. As my mind tried to make sense of things I looked to my left, towards the bedroom door, I could see the outline of a figure. 
in the tiny amount of pre-dawn light I could just see a white shape, long dark hair hanging down and sunken eyes. I could also hear it breathing. After a few seconds of absolute mind-bending horror, where I literally felt every hair stand on end it took a step into my room, out of the dark hallway. The hallway had no windows, so my room was slightly lighter. The change of the light also changed the face slightly, I could see it more clearly. I saw that it was in fact my mother's face and she was sleepwalking. She very occasionally did, and also had a lot of other sleep problems, including very vivid nightmares. She quickly left and went back to bed, fortunately for my own sanity I never saw her sleepwalk again. I visited Aokigahara, the notorious suicide forest in Japan. I didn't see any bodies or anything, but I did come across quite a few traces that people had left behind, articles of old, rotting clothing hanging from trees, a wallet full of cards, empty bottles of medication, razor blades, a small campfire and thermos. It was apparent that all of it had been there for quite a long time, too. When I was serving my time as an engineer in the merchant navy we used to have to clean out what are called sea chests, they're basically big filters for sea water that we would pump in to use as coolant and if the pumps were on when we were dockside we'd find all sorts of things like bottles, fish, crabs etc. One day we opened up the chest, pulled out the filter and immediately saw this gold shiny thing which turned out to be a Rolex watch. Usually we just dumped out the filter but with the mitigating circumstances we went through it thoroughly and found a piece of a shirt with cuff link still attached and last but not least a nicely rotted finger. The police ended up closing off the dock and dredging it but never found anything on the end. A co-worker explained to me when he's in the shower, he uses olive oil on his fingers to lube up his asshole to prevent colon cancer. Dude was giving me health advice b slash c I was younger than him. When I asked him why would you tell me this? He said I noticed you go to the restroom a lot. We had a neighbor who moved out and came back a year later for a visit. He brought with him his two kids and Asian woman he claimed was his wife. He claimed it was the same wife he used to have and and that she just lost weight and had a makeover. But we remember the wife as a really tiny woman 5 feet 1 inch or so with wavy bob hair, this new one was about 5 feet 6 inches with long straight black hair, looked younger too. Even she took off her sandals and I saw even without sandals she was about 5 feet 6 inches. While on vacation he told the neighbor of his vacation home that his wife died of a brain tumor. I began to wonder where his wife really was. I think he really just sent her back to her Asian home country. But it was creepy to see him trying to pass off the new one as his wife. When I was about 12 I was sleeping on my trampoline with a friend and we heard the bushes move behind us and flashed our flashlight to the bushes and a mountain lion was laying there stalking us, I have never ran so fast in my life. When I was probably 15 I went kayaking with some friends. We came across what looked like a log in the water. There were some people on shore that were waving us over saying someone was probably trapped under the canoe. They used one of our kayaks to go out and look. There was a kid only a few years older than us that had gotten wrapped up in some rope when the canoe turned over. He didn't make it. They found his dad a few days later. Also didn't make it. That image I will never get out of my mind. In Baghdad almost 20 years ago. I was working alone at night with a busted up small dozer with one swinging headlight. I would get off from time to time and do shovel work. One time I noticed a bunch of eyes glowing off in the distance, like five or six sets, just staring at me. I didn't think too much about it and went on working. After a few minutes I picked me head up again and noticed the eyes were still there, but closer. I wasn't sure if they were harmless or what, so I continued working but didn't turn my back to them. After a few more minutes I pick my head up again and they are gone. Sweet, now I don't have to be concerned I thought. I worked for a few more minutes and looked up and noticed all the eyes again, but they had moved around from the first side and were behind me and close enough I could now make out what they were in the blackness with the one single swinging dim headlight. They were a pack of feral dogs, 
looking at me like I would make a good meal. They were standing on a berm I had made, maybe four foot high. I grabbed a big dirt clod, and charged at them, yelling as I ran and tossed the clod in their direction, they didn't flinch. Oh I thought. So I get back on the dozer and take off towards them with it. I get closer and start going up the berm and only then do they start walking briskly away. However they stopped a short distance away and stared. Luckily shortly after another dump truck came by and I got a ride out of there. Was working in a restaurant. Nice place. That night we held a charity dinner for a youth in need type of house. The guy representing the house, a worker there, was such a nice and kind man. Every teen there was only saying nice thing of him. A good soul, that was giving everything he could for these teens. At one point they gave a big check for the charity. I must guess an amount they rarely received. Well under the excitement, that poor man had a cardiac arrest. Dropped there on the stage, check in hand. He could and be brought back. He died. Seeing this was already bad enough, but the kids everywhere in the restaurant screaming and crying for hours after. Haunting.